Hi, everybody, and welcome to this new episode of SageMaker Friday, Season 4. I think this is episode number nine. 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 Uh, my name is Julian, and I'm a dev advocate focusing on AI and machine learning. And as usual, <laughs> please meet my co-presenter. Hi, everyone. My name is Segurin, and I'm a senior data scientist working with the AWS Machine Learning Solution Lab. My role is to help customers get their ML projects on the right track in order to create business value as fast as possible. Thank you, Sego, for being with us. Thank you. Uh, so, where are we in this season? So, last week, uh, we completed the uh, automation mm -hmm. uh, segment. Exactly. And this week, we are embarking on uh, the last four episodes, which are dedicated to a really cool topic, AutoML. Auto <laughs> right? So, we're gonna we're gonna dive into AutoML and uh, and learn what we can do with this technology. Okay, so today uh, we are actually starting with a, a media slash entertainment slash web use mm -hmm. case where we're going to try and predict clicks. Clicks. Okay? So click prediction, pretty cool stuff. Uh, before I forget, this is where you'll find uh, the code for those last four episodes. Uh, they might, hopefully by the time you watch this, the, the code will be there. <laughs> I still need to clean it up a little bit, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it'll be there. Okay, if not, you can ping me. Okay, all right. So let's uh, let's start looking at our problem for today. Mm -hmm. um, so click prediction, mm -hmm. right? Which really is a, a very common problem for, I guess, retail, uh, media. You know, anytime you want to try and uh, and and predict uh, whether a customer will click on, on, on the, an item, mm -hmm. right? It could be an ad, of course. Uh, the, uh, you know, ad, uh, the ad world is, uh, is very uh, eager to predict the right, uh, the right clicks. Um, but generally, yeah, you, 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 you have some, some content that's displayed, mm -hmm. okay? So again, ads or products or uh, movies or songs, etc. and and you want to figure out, um, you know, if, if a certain item is going to get a click or not. Okay. So that, of course, you only show to your user the, the items that have the highest probability of getting a click. Okay. So very general problem. Um, and uh, we're going to frame this as a classification problem, classification. right? Binary classification problem. So, click or not click. Yes, click or not click. So zero one. In fact, okay, obviously we get probabilities between zero and one. So we need a data set mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we actually found a, an interesting data set on the Kaggle. Uh, you can see the uh, the URL here. It's it's a public domain data set. So thank you uh, to the uh, to the user who actually uploaded this on Kaggle. Pretty pretty good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's rather well. It's rather big compared to our examples so far. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about four, over 450,000 rows. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not big at all compared to, uh, no, to the ad click big, big, uh, data big set. Usually, you know, usually those have you know, millions, mm -hmm. billions of lines. Billions of but hey, it's, it's large enough to, to, to give us a challenge mm -hmm. and, and small enough that we can actually work with it today. Okay. So maybe let's take a quick look mm -hmm. at the data first. Uh, so it's a CSV file. You actually get a, a training set and a test set, but we're only using the training set here. Uh, so yeah, we get 460 something thousand rows, 15 columns. And it's, it's really what I think you would expect. Um, so session ID for the, I guess the web session, a timestamp, a user ID, so, you know, who, who is the user actually viewing that piece of content? Uh, what product are we showing? Uh, which campaign ID is this part of? What's the ID of the web page? Um, and again, in, you know, your raw log would probably have, you know, URLs and everything. Mm -hmm. right? So it's, um, it's safe to say this has already been processed. Yeah, uh, up to a point, right? So we know web page 13787 is, you know, whatever is on our website, okay? <laughs> yes. Product categories, uh, user group IDs, maybe we have some user segments already, gender, age range, 
um, and, and some other variables uh, features um, that are not always super clear, no, right? No. But that's uh, that's life. And of course, we have a label uh, is click that tells us you know zero one, uh, no click or click. And as you would expect, you know we have very few clicks, ah. right? <laughs> Sorry, unbalanced data. Unbalanced data. Okay. Can we show it? So we uh, yeah, we can see. Yeah, so we can see some stats uh, here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if we want to see the um, the label count, we can see it's about yeah, it's about seven percent, something like that. Uh, seven percent clicks and uh, and ninety three percent no clicks, which is actually very high. Because uh, you know, I, I worked in ad tech a century ago, and it's not uh, century. Yeah, almost <laughs> two centuries ago. <laughs> Hi, if you're watching, and um, yeah, let me remove this. Um, and yeah, and it's typical to get you know maybe 0.1 percent mm -hmm. click, right? Um, of course, we do better, um, but yeah, it's uh, usually very very unbalanced. Okay, so this is not such a hostile data set. Okay, so we can see, um, so an interesting thing is, it, what are those columns actually, right? So we see, you know, campaign IDs, web page IDs uh, here as integers. But these are kind of, uh, you know, placeholder values. These are, these are really categories, right? So if we were doing machine learning in the usual way, you know, we will look closely at each column and figure out, is it useful at all? So session ID, it's it's certainly a unique uh, ID, right? Know, so yeah. probably no, no, not much value here. Uh, campaign ID, web page ID, product category. Again, all, all these are integers, but they're really categorical. Yeah, variables, categorical yeah. Right. So let's keep this in mind. Uh, and I'm sure you know uh, all you data scientists out there. You you know you would go and start uh, engineering features with this stuff, right? Uh, and it's actually a lot of categorical variables here. Okay, so not a very complex data set. Um, and again, we could go and use uh, our favorite algos. We could use XJBoost. We could use LIGBM. LIGBM. Uh, you know, lots of algos out there to build. Uh, to build a model classification, model, classification right? model. But um, as we are soon, lazy today. I'm lazy. No. We are lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lazier. Okay. So yeah, we, we're getting lazy and lazier and lazier, lazier. as we <laughs> progress into the season. Uh, and so we don't want to build a model ourselves. Not okay. Um, <laughs> we're going to look at a technical auto ML. So before we dive into it. Sego, can you can you describe a little bit what AutoML is? Why do we even care? Uh, you know, what are the use cases? And, and then we'll talk a little bit about how to do it on SageMaker. Perfect. So, um, yes, this is what we, this, we have seen until now. Building machine learning model uh, requires to manu manually prepare features, right. test multiple algorithms, optimize hundreds of model parameters uh, in order to find the best model uh, for your data. And this approach, uh, as we've seen, uh, requires a deep ML expertise. So um, if you don't have this expertise, it's not a problem. You could use an automated approach mm -hmm. that is called um, the auto ML approach. Okay. Um, because in a nutshell, auto ML automatically prepare your data sets, try different machine learning approaches for you, and combine their uh, results in order to deliver high quality uh, models. Okay, so basically we just bring the data. We put the data. Here's the data, go and figure it out. Exactly. And I get a model in the end. <laughs> hmm, okay. That's uh, it. Right. That's it. You like it that way. Right. Oh yeah, the lazy guy in me loves this. Okay. Uh, so, all, all joking aside, I mean, it, laziness is, is, is a virtue, as we know, but what are the, the I guess, the, the real life use cases yeah, for, for ML? Why do customers, why do uh, ML teams look at AutoML? So, of course, uh, if you don't have any uh, ML skills uh, to, be, to build quality models, you will use, um, you will use AutoML. But after, the second option uh, for AutoML is to help experienced uh, practitioners analyze data and train uh, model at scales. Okay. 
because um, for uh, the experts, uh, AutoML offers the potential uh, of implementing, implementing best ML practices only once, mm. and then uh, after so uh, model selection, assembling, hyperparameter tuning, etc. Okay. And then after you are able to uh, repeatedly deploy them. So this is really the second aspect of the auto. -ML. Okay, so if you have lots of data sets, lots of different models, uh, you know, if you have five people in the team and two hundred problems to work on, yeah, yeah, I guess you could use auto ML to find the most promising ones quickly exactly. and then focus on those um, and, 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 you know, focus on the top one. Exactly. After you focus on the yeah. best one and you can improve yeah, it. Exactly. Kind of filter your problems exactly. quickly. Exactly. If you get, if you get a decent baseline with auto ML, then it's worth spending more time. Yeah. And it's going to help you to scale uh, mm -hmm. without having manual intervention. Yeah. And you so. can, of course, and you, 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 of course, uh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. You, you don't spend your time writing that feature engineering code and no. tuning code again and again. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's built into uh, your auto ML uh, tool, right? Exactly. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So just to summarize, so it, again, we just bring in the data, right? Yeah. And then it does, it finds, it figures out the problem I'm trying to solve. It's going to try yeah, to find. Okay. The, interesting. Yeah. It, cleans and processes the data yes trains the model yes and tunes it tune it okay all right let's give it a shot <laughs> okay and it works and it, oh yeah well yeah we'll see we'll, we'll see we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah i'm 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 lazy but not stupid okay i try try not to be okay i am sorry Okay, so SageMaker has uh, an auto ML capability, mm -hmm. which is called SageMaker Autopilot, which I think we introduced last season. Yeah. But we'll uh, keep uh, looking at it uh, in those four episodes. And, um, and there's another tool that we're going to look at, uh, which is an open source library called AutoGluon. Um, and um, we will look at it in, in a lot of detail next week, and I guess the, the week after that. that. Today we're going to focus on uh, on autopilot. Maybe we'll give you just a quick taste of uh, of Gluon and how it differs from uh, from a managed service like uh, SageMaker Autopilot. Okay, so let's get to work. So there are two ways to use mm -hmm. autopilot. Mm -hmm. uh, we can use the um, SageMaker UI, SageMaker Studio, Studio UI, UI, and of course we can use the SageMaker SDK. And, but it will be just a couple of lines. But it's very, yeah, you will be, yeah, you'll see it's very little code. Okay, so I guess let's start with the UI, okay? Yes. All right. Um, so let's go. And so this is where you want to start. Um, so experiments and trials right here. And click, yeah, maybe just give it a little space. Click on create autopilot Pilot experiment. experiment. Okay. okay. And this will be called uh, autopilot click prediction or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we could create tags. Um, uh, we could add this to a project. We're not going to do this. So of course we need to, you promised I would only give the past the data set, right? I yes. Okay. All right. So let's find my bucket. All right. We need an output location for this, uh, this training job. Okay, let's use this. Ah, select the machine learning problem type. So we could say auto, yes. and uh, and then it will figure out if uh, we're trying to do binary classification, regression, or multi-class. Okay. Um, so that's totally okay. If um, the only thing is, if you do this. Um, it uses the default metric, mm -hmm. which I think is a validation accuracy. Mm -hmm. So instead we could say, okay, we know it's we a binary, binary classification binary. problem. And why don't we use uh, AUC as a metric? Okay. Perfect. All right. Do we want to run a complete experiment? Um, so yes, here we want to go all the way to tuning. Um, you could only ask for the, basically the analysis mm -hmm. uh, step. Uh, and and the generation of uh, of notebooks, which we'll see in a few minutes. Okay, but let's let's go all the way. Uh, you could also auto deploy the best model. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's not do that. Okay, and of course we have extra settings for uh, permissions, encryption, VPC, VPC etc. Yeah. Okay, 
which we won't touch. And finally, we just click on Create Experiment. Okay, and off it goes. Okay, and we have a very nice uh, 90, 70 vintage animation. Yes, amazing. Uh, more importantly, we see the different steps. Okay, uh, so as you would think, uh, pre-processing, so looking at the data set, figuring out what those columns are, um, and what kind of uh, feature engineering steps to apply, and what to try. Because, of course, uh, Autopilot is going to try different things. Okay, and this is what our, this is what candidates are. Mm -hmm. Candidates are basically, hey, I've got this ID. I've got this ID of uh, feature engineering plus training. Okay. okay, let's go and try this. Let's do one encoding, one out encoding plus blah, 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 and then use XGBoost. Let's do uh, one out encoding plus something else and use uh, neural networks, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So it's going to generate different pipelines. Then it's going to apply those pipelines to our data set. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's going to create multiple copies of the initial data set. And then, uh, then it's going to uh, uh, actually train and tune, so la launch for each of the candidate pipelines, launch uh, a hyperparameter tuning job, mm -hmm. okay? And, and by then, yeah, we'll start seeing models. Um, and finally, it generates an explainability report awesome. with uh, SageMaker Clarify, which uh, we covered uh, a few yes. episodes ago, mm -hmm. okay? So we'll, we'll uh, leave this one running for now. Uh, as you can imagine, it takes a little while to do all of this. Uh, and I already completed uh, a job. So let's, uh, let's take a look. But also when we see that it's kind of as well of uh, automation because all the steps of the ML process are automated as well. Yeah, so that's it. We're done. Uh, we done. Yeah, we're yeah. absolutely done. So, uh, so um, last week we did some... Yep. Automation manually. Yes. And now everything. You yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. There's uh, yeah, it's absolutely uh, similar. Uh, we have uh, automation all the way, and uh, we will actually see that we get access to that code, right? Uh, so idea. let's let's leave this one uh, running for a little while, and um, and yeah, we'll come back to it, and hopefully you know it makes some progress. Okay. All right. Fine. So let's time travel <laughs> to the end of the job, okay? Um, and once pre-processing is, uh, is uh, done, yeah. all right, so once we've analyzed the data, once we've, came, once we've come up with the pipelines, uh, we actually get access to the, those auto-generated notebooks, okay? And this is a completed job. And you see those two links here okay so we see we can uh, we can read a data exploration notebook and a candidate generation notebook. okay all right and again this is available as soon as uh pre-processing is uh, is done okay so let's look uh at those notebooks so the data exploration notebook is um basically you know, i would say basic stats on mm -hmm. the data set right um, so nothing, you know, not, nothing super fancy, nothing that you wouldn't do yourself, but I guess... But still important to do. Yeah, it's still important, uh, at least as a sanity check, okay, just yeah, to, exactly. to, to check that, okay, this is the data that the, this job uh, used, and yeah, this is really, you know, this is really what it looks like, and, uh, you know, missing values are what they should be, right? So we see there's a, there are a couple of columns that are a little bit uh, mm -hmm. empty, right? So hopefully we have some uh, imputing logic to uh, in in the pipeline. Let, we'll we'll check some stats, right? Number of unique entries. Okay, is click obviously zero one. Mm -hmm. um, you know we see seven age levels and ten products and ten campaigns, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, and we see session ID is actually equal to the number of rows. So wow. that's a very useless, uh, <laughs> a very useless column, right? We, no, we, can, so we can see that there are different user ID who connect. Uh, yes, and we have different displays. Displays for uh, for the same user, probably. Yeah. Okay. So again, um, nothing, you know, nothing uh, extraordinary, but it's good to have that 
just to, to get a quick sanity check on, on the data. But we can see as well that campaign and web page idea are still uh, seen as a numerical value. Yes. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're analyzed as numerical value. So, but I guess it's the data set description. So, but yeah. you're right. We need to check uh, in the uh, in the feature engineering code, you know, what decision mm. Autopilot took. Mm -mm. Um, does it consider those uh, um, columns to be integers or does it consider those columns to be uh, uh, categories? Category. We'll see. Okay. Wait and see. All right. So now let's go to the more interesting notebook, which is this candidate definition notebook. So this is where we see, um, this is where we see the, the decisions mm -hmm. that Autopilot has taken. Okay. So there's some uh, some set of code here which you can skip. And by the way, this is a notebook, and you can run it. Mm. Okay. So uh, here it's a, it's a read-only copy that I opened. Uh, when you click on here, yeah, it's it's you just get a read-only copy. But uh, if you import it, then it copies it from S3 to your uh, SageMaker Studio instance, and you can edit it and, uh, mm. and run it. Okay. And the cool thing is, of course, you can replicate the AutoML job. There's a lot of discussion on, yeah, AutoML is a bit of a, you know, it's, 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 it's hard to understand what happens. Yeah, we got a model, but how, how do we know how this was built? Well, now we know, right? So it's, uh, you know, I call it open book uh, AutoML because you can see, um, you can see the feature engineering code, you can see the training code, you can see the tuning code, and you can run it on your own. Okay. So you can actually run all those things yourself. Okay. Um, all right, so now we're starting to see some of the pipelines. Okay, so pipeline zero is, okay, so uh, we transform numeric features using robust imputer, categorical features using threshold one hot encoder, daytime features using daytime vectorizer. And then we scale everything, and then we train with XJBoost. Mm -hmm. Okay, and here we see some setup code where, you know, if we wanted to train this again on, bigger instances or smaller instances or differently but we could could do it okay it's just technical code the the important bit is this description here um this one this one is uh doing quite the same. yeah it's doing the same except it's, it's supplying a, a, a pca pca yeah before scaling why not it's still doing xj boost afterwards mm. Um, this one is trying linear learner, okay. so linear regression, which linear is uh, regression. another algo supported by uh, um, Autopilot. Um, this one is doing something a little different again with XGBoost. Uh, okay, another one. Another XGBoost combination. Another XGBoost. Uh, do we see an example maybe of... Oh yeah, okay. Here it is. Mm -hmm. So MLP is multi-layer yeah, perception, so feed-forward uh, neural networks. Okay, which is also supported by uh, by autopilot. So we we get those ten pipelines. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, a combination of feature engineering and algo selection. So different ingredients and different recipes. Exactly. <laughs> different ingredients, different recipes. Good summary. Um, and and again, you know, uh, whoops. We could, uh, you know, we could run all this stuff. We could run one pipeline only if we wanted. Okay. And then we can launch uh, tuning. Okay. And here, as we have, we actually use three different algos, right? Yeah. XJBoost, Linear Learner, like and um, Neural Networks. Uh, we actually use an advanced feature in SageMaker, which is a multi-algorithm hyperparameter tuning. Mm. So we've done tuning before on a single algo, but you can actually launch jobs um for for different algos okay. right uh, but again this all this code is uh is generated for you we can see the hyperparameter ranges etc etc okay and then you you just launch it okay and this really is equivalent or i should say identical to the job we are running now okay so you can replicate uh, the job you can understand how it was built you can explain how it was built and you can tweak you can keep tweaking right so if you have Further ideas, if you want to modify the uh, the pre-processing code, you can do that, run the notebook again. So it, I think it's pretty cool, mm -hmm. right? Okay, um, so let's take a look. Is our job, where's our job now? Okay, uh, 
Here it is. Okay, it's still pre-processing. Okay, because that's it's really the bigger, you know, the bigger part of the job. Because we need to do this, uh, we need to do this a few times, and it's a it's a lot of data right, that we have. Okay, we'll keep we'll keep checking on this guy. Um, so can we see the code? Because we see we see the tuning code, but can we see the code for those uh, data prep steps? And the answer is yes. Okay. Where? Ah, so <laughs> if you click on this, well, if you click on this, thing, it does nothing. But there, <laughs> it's just a shame. But there's actually you can actually see in in your browser you can see the path, the S3 path. So if you go in in the output S3 bucket for the job, you and look for it. you know candidate generation etc., you you'll find it. So I. I copied it. Yeah, candidate data processors is, is what you what you're looking for in that output location, and I just copied that uh, that bit because there's a lot of information there, right? Uh, you see, uh, you have all the training splits, the validation mm -hmm. splits, because of course autopilot will split your uh, input data set as needed. You see all the pre-processed versions, so lots of stuff. But you can also see those uh, those pipelines, mm -hmm. uh, those pre -pro So let's look at maybe a number nine right yeah this one let's take a look so that's the actual python code okay and these are based on transforms that are uh, super similar to us uh, uh, scalar and transforms and this is actually uh this is actually available on uh, on github right so if we let me try and let's see if i'm lucky yes okay uh, so if you go on GitHub, you, you find this repo here, and you'll find the code uh, for uh, for those uh, transforms, pre processing, right? It's all in there. Impute. Okay. So if you're curious exactly what this code is, it's on GitHub, right? So we import that, and then <coughs> we'll we have a pre processing code. Okay. So we see some columns are treated as categorical, mm -hmm. you know, product, product category, yes. gender, edge level, makes sense. Some columns are treated as numerical. Mm -hmm. So you could argue, you know, campaign ID, web page ID, should they be categorical mm -hmm. or should they be numerical? Um, my opinion is they probably need to be categorical. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, you have the code. Mm -hmm. So just change the code, upload it back to S3, run the pipeline again, and and uh, and you know you'll see if it makes a difference, right? But here, you know, the decision that autopilot took is this one, okay? And then it creates the different steps, so uh, ordinal encoder, uh, robust imputer to fill in missing values, vectorizer for date and time, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then it combines everything into a to a scikit learn pipeline because that's really what it is and and this is what is run okay so again open book stuff right and this is really stuff that you would write yourself mm -mm. but you know you can go and reuse the code you can tweak it you can learn from it or you know criticize it but the good thing is it's there yeah okay? it's it's visible and it's really a gain of time yeah, you see that. yeah. and it's you can see it's not it's not a lot of code here right and yeah maybe look at this one here see if we have some differences well, different objects but again same logic mm -mm. right different transforms different transforms okay so once we launch the job we go through each step okay and as we hit the the tuning step we start to see some jobs okay? mm -hmm. and we'll probably start seeing jobs uh, in the other uh, in the other example in a few minutes okay we'll make sure to show that to you but you'll start seeing uh, tuning jobs appear. Okay, and again, these are all the tuning jobs coming from those 10 pipelines. Mm. Okay, and I think by default, we run 250 50, jobs, 50, right? 50, so yeah. 25 jobs per pipeline. Okay, so each of those jobs, you, you can go and open. Okay, uh, and each one of those is, um, is, a, is a training job. Okay? okay, and we can see, you know, um, okay, that's the original input data set. We can see where the splits are. Um, we can see um, what actual transform data was used. So mm -hmm. this is one of the jobs from pipeline one. 
Uh, we can see this feature engineering code. We can see um, the feature engineering model that was used for um, uh, to transform features. And we can see the actual model that was trained. Okay. okay? So again, you, you have access to, if you want to inspect particular jobs, you, you can see everything here. And of course, at the end of the day, you know, uh, after uh, maybe an hour or something, uh, the, the job is complete. And needless to say, all this stuff runs on managed infrastructure, right? We didn't even say it because by now, this should be pretty obvious. Um, we, we didn't configure anything here. Um, and so we get the top job, which is this one, right? Uh, with an AUC of 0.60, which is, I would say, on the lower end mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, what we would consider okay. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's the baseline. Yeah, it's yeah? the baseline. It's the baseline. Uh, this tells us, yeah, there is something there. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, there is something there. There is some predictive power in this data. So, you know, maybe this is a good place to start. Okay. And of course, we can do better than 0.6. Mm -mm. Okay. And, um, hopefully. Uh, hopefully. But this is a good, this is a good starting point, mm -mm. right? Exactly. Given, given how little effort we've done, mm -mm. we've taken here, just literally, you know, clicking in the UI and, and getting a job, this is what we get. And this is a reasonably difficult data set, right? yeah. I must say. It's okay, so we have this top job. Uh, we, of course, again, we could inspect it. Um, we see this is an XGBoost job. We, again, we get all the artifacts information here. And we see the uh, feature importance report from, uh, from Clarify. So web page ID is, is the, the most important one. Session ID really shouldn't be there. No. It should have been dropped. Mm -mm. Okay, so probably we should drop because it's it's a meaningless uh, you know, it's a meaningless uh, um, uh, value. So you know we should remove it and help XGBoost figure out that this is really important. Uh, date, time, campaign ID, product, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and of course you can get a full report if you want to. Okay, but we've covered Clarify in a, in a lot of detail already. Okay. So next we could go and deploy the model if we wanted. Okay, so we could deploy it on an endpoint. We've seen how to do this a while ago and you would just give it a name, right? Uh, why not do it? Click endpoint, um, M5XL. Do we want to set up data capture? Remember we discussed um, SageMaker um, model monitor. Mm -mm -mm. So we could configure this thing here and we should say, all right, go and deploy. Okay. And in a few minutes, we'll have this endpoint and we can go and test it. All right. So how much code did we write? Three lines, four lines, five lines. Zero. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we I, really wrote zero lines, yeah. right? Um, I, I did everything in the UI. Yeah, you did uh, everything. Of course, we, we wrote some code here to, to show you the data, right? Uh, which you could probably go and look at with, you know, Data Wrangler and maybe do some transform, drop some columns. Yeah, but I won't do that. Uh, again, we covered Data Wrangler in, in a lot of detail earlier. Um, but we really wrote no code mm -hmm. at all, okay? Which is fine. Mm -hmm. So... This is really how you can build and deploy uh, your uh, your model with Autopilot and, and Studio and no code. Okay, okay now, so now let's see how, how much code we would write if we use the SageMaker SDK. One line. One line, yeah, you're pretty much right. Two. You're pretty much right. <laughs> okay. All right, so we load the data set. We do some descriptions here. All right, this is, that doesn't count. Oh, uh, yeah. So the data set needs to be in S3, okay. but it's already in S3 because everything's in S3. My life is in S3. <laughs> so that doesn't really count. And okay, that's one line. So we create an auto ML job. This is the uh, SageMaker IAM role for permissions, S3 access, SageMaker access, etc. Um, which is, what's the name of the label? Label, yeah. What problem type are we uh, are we covering? And again, you could say auto, auto could and be auto. done with it. But, but here I want to use AUC, so that's what I'm using. And max candidates 250, I think is the default value. So we could probably, uh, yeah, it could be, yeah, it could really be as easy as this. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's so it. You don't need to be a software engineer, right? And then you call fit, passing the location of your data set in S3. So two lines of code, right? Yeah. Two simple lines. Two very simple. And then you line. get the same, you get the same result, right? You get the same result. So let's take a look and see if we may. Which one do you prefer? SDK? Studio? Ah, which one do I prefer? No, I prefer the SDK. <laughs> Sorry. I was born in the in, I'm, I was born in the 70s. I'm uh, you know, I'm a terminal kind of guy. I use VI, yeah. I use, you know, I type with two fingers. I love, you know, the green on black theme. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. You know, what can I do? Uh, more power to all you guys with super fancy IDs, but you know, I'm uh, yeah. Jupiter for me is kind of state of the art. Okay. All right. Who cares? So um, we have a few minutes left, and at the at the beginning of the episode, we mentioned this other tool called AutoGluon. Ah, yes. Okay. So it's it's an open source library. Okay. Uh, let me show you maybe where to find it. Yeah. So AutoGluon is actually uh, it's a couple of years old, I think. Yeah. Um, it's an open source project. Started by Amazon Teams, mm -hmm. um, you can read the research paper on, on archive, and I, I would actually highly, highly recommend that you yeah. read it. You know, uh, sometimes those are super, you know, math heavy and difficult and you know obnoxious. Can I say that? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I because I don't understand what they say, so I, I feel you know I feel really sh ashamed. But this one is very good yeah. and very, very readable. Okay, it, very it doesn't. Clear. I don't think it, it has. It has very little math. You can you can really skip it. Um, but it, it's it's a super good intro to AutoML and and the, the design decisions and you know AutoML versus hyperparameter tuning. Mm -hmm. There's there's a good study on the different AutoML frameworks out there. Still very relevant. So I, I really, really recommend that you read it. I, I really enjoy this one. And I, I don't say that very often with no. my research papers. Uh, of course, the code is on GitHub. And this is, uh, why is it called AutoGluon? Simply because it's based on Gluon, uh, the Gluon API, which is part of Apache MXNet, mm -hmm. okay? And so what can it do? It can do AutoML on tabular data, and similar to what we have. Uh, text, so NL, some NLP, uh, NLP use cases, and, and computer vision, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's it does uh, pretty interesting data processing automatically, uh, and what I really like about it is it has a, a pretty big collection of algos. Mm -hmm. So you can do uh, linear regression, KNN, lots of tree algos. Mm -hmm. So of course XJBoost, uh, LightGBM, CatBoost, uh, Extra Trees, and a few more. And deep learning uh, in, a, in a pretty clever way, mm. which is more uh, advanced than plain uh, feed-forward networks. Uh, we, we'll go into more detail next week. And particularly, it, it's really based. The reason why AutoGluon really shines, I think, is um, it, it has some clever ensembling techniques. Okay, So again, we'll talk about ensembling like, in detail. Yeah. But in a nutshell, ensembling means train lots of different models and combine them in clever ways mm. to you know to make them smarter uh, and to generate better predictions mm -hmm. right so Excellent. you know uh, unity is a strength right you know in a way yes, yes. of course of course, of course. <laughs> um so that's that's pretty good uh very very interesting and it's again just one or two lines of code ah. okay so now now you want to see it right so okay let, let me very, we, we won't look at the example in detail, but just give you a sense of what Gluon, AutoGluon is, okay? Uh, so, uh, of course, you need to install it. And this is the same data set, mm -hmm. right? Let's zoom in maybe a bit. Same data set, upload to S3, same code. Okay. 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 Uh, and so import uh, the tabular data set object which is so how we right. refer to our data in S3. And we can read straight from S3. Uh, tabular predictor, uh, which is how we um, train and predict. Okay. So here I'm going for the, the full data set. Um, so we'll, we'll dive into this a little more uh, in, in future episodes. But of course, um, AutoGluon can infer 
the, the, the type of your columns. Mm -hmm. And it makes it also easy to assign your own types. Okay. So for example, here we can see a lot of variables are actually, a lot of columns, sorry, are actually picked up as integers or floats. But I could actually pass a schema saying, no, 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 no. I want product category one and two to be categories. Idea yeah, so it's, 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 yeah, exactly. And like, it's actually mostly categories, right? Okay, and now, now I've got my categories uh, set right. Then I create this predictor object with the label and the evaluation metrics. And there's a wide choice of metrics, which is really cool as well. And then we just call fit, I'm passing the location of our data in S3, a time limit, right? Uh, if we want, well, you, can, you can have no limit. Uh, how to train? Do you want best quality? Do you want fast mm -hmm. inference? We have, a, again, a bunch of options we'll look at. Okay, here I'm passing my actual schema. I can exclude some algos. Okay, so I've got nothing against KNN and fast yeah. But <laughs> just to show you, you know, <laughs> okay. just to show you how to exclude stuff. Okay, again, we'll, we'll dive into this uh, in detail. So, and then we see, you know, pre-processing. And then we can start... Uh, and we see some some job being trained, and we see bagging, yeah, bagging, bagging, very cool technique. We'll talk about that next week. And sampling, okay. Um, and we see level one models and level two models. So that means we have stacking. Oh. Again, we'll talk about stacking next week. Okay, and it's actually still running, right? But we see. And it actually stops by default at uh, level three, so we'll have uh, mm. uh, we'll have uh, two layers of models in the final prediction. Uh, but we can already see at level two that we have really good AUC, right? We're already yeah, we're point sixty five. We're probably gonna get close to point seven when it's by by the time it's done. Uh, we can print the leaderboard, etc. So we can see, you know, uh, we get significantly better results uh, than autopilot. And it's, it's probably because we have, a, I would say, a wider range of algos. Mm -hmm. and, and more than well, anything, we have ensembling techniques, which are really, really powerful. Okay, um, So we'll look at that next week. We'll look at, here I'm running this stuff on my in my notebook. We'll show you how to run this on, in a SageMaker job. Okay, so much more, much more coming. Okay, uh, but we're, we're almost done. So looking at the job we started, we see, you know, pre-processing is done. Uh, Candidate definitions have been generated. Now it's engineering features, so it's applying those ten pipelines to um, uh, to the data set, and then it goes into tune. Okay, and this runs for about an hour. Okay. So we won't wait to see that. But you you saw the final result. Okay, so say so we'll, uh, time to wrap up. Yeah, time to wrap up. So what can we say? AutoML is 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 interesting. Is interesting. Um, we. If you if you don't like writing machine learning code, mm. it's great. It's great. Uh, if you want to uh, experiment with different algos quickly, automatically, mm. it's, it's very good. It's very right? good. And still, uh, you can you can exactly understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. You can get uh, full visibility, and you can keep tweaking. Right. That's good. Cool. And so, if you want to go the managed way, uh, autopilot is is uh, really the way to go. It's the simplest way. If you want a slightly more uh, do-it-yourself do way, yourself, yeah. uh, Autogluon is very interesting. And, um, and uh, again, with those ensembling techniques and, and, and other techniques we'll discuss, uh, we'll see we can get really good, really good results with really two lines of code. Mm. Okay. And if we wanted to run 100 jobs in parallel and do something else uh, while it trained, then we could do that. Okay. So the scaling effect with AutoML is very interesting, I think. <laughs> All right, I think that's the end of this one. Uh, Sego, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I hope you found this first episode on Autumn and interesting. Uh, we have three more, and uh, and they'll just get crazier as we go. Okay, um, we'll want to end this season in style, so bear with us and stay with us. Uh, and until then, have a great week and see you soon. Bye bye. bye, -bye.